Hi, this is Tony Swinehart with MCP's Full Court Press, brought to you by House of Flavors Incorporated, as well as Spectrum Health Ludington Hospitals Orthopedics. Today we are talking to Mike Hainquitz. He is the former, now, defensive coordinator for Northwestern football. Most recently, he has uh, quite a coaching history. So thank you, Mr. Hankwitz, for being with us today. So well, let's start out with, you played ball when you were, what, what year did you start playing ball? And then how did that lead into coaching for you? When I was in seventh grade, uh, Scottville started a seventh, eighth grade football program. You know, we had two teams, the whites and the blues. And uh, <laughs> we had, prior to that, we had gone out in the schoolyard and uh, Tim Stevens and Kelly Noel and Larry Schulte and a bunch of us from town, we get together and we'd play in the playground by fifth, sixth grade. And Tim's house wasn't that far away. And we took one of the old big, uh, like storage things, we cleaned it out and that was our locker room. Now, none <laughs> of us had all the pads, you know, some of us had like a pair of shoulder pads that, and we, we rubbished through the dumpsters when they were throwing stuff away at school and pulled some of this out. So one guy might have a helmet, another guy might have shoulder pads, but we just had a blast. And, you know, okay. you, some of the funnest ones were when we had a big rainstorm and there were puddles everywhere, but uh, oh, yes. we, we did that. And then when I was in seventh grade, they started the program. So we had a blast, you know, there were a lot of men in town volunteering, helping us, you know, teach us how to play football. And, um, I don't remember how, but in the eighth grade, Coach Dietrich, Lauren Dietrich came. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I ended up volunteering and I'd go on the, I was a, like a manager or something, you know, uh, at games. And I even got to go on this bus and away games with them, you know. So, you know, you're, you're listening and seeing what's happening and things. And then uh, as a freshman, I was... Six one six foot one sixty five, and I got moved up to the varsity, and uh, we uh, we only won two games, but you know I could <laughs> see I could see this transformation, and um, I remember uh, you know Scotland had a great tradition in basketball, uh, mm -hmm. the quarterfinals, and Harold Hope had coached a lot of winning teams and stuff, and then um, but football, I think I remember reading their last championship was like nineteen thirty two. Well, yes. Dietrich comes and, you know, he's, as I, as I get into this, Coach Dietrich and Coach Ingram were the main reasons I ended up coaching because of the way they treated us and the way they coached. And um, so it, my sophomore year then, we win the championship for the first time since 1932. So 1963 were conference champs. Then we win it again in 64, you know, like in 63, Dave Chilberg, and uh, that was a senior class. The next year was Rick Dar and Fred Reeder and Tony McLean and different guys. Well, then my senior, we wanted to win it again, and we did. And, awesome. Uh, but that experience, you know, first of all, I enjoy, I loved athletics. I loved playing, I loved competing, but I, I think the experience of, having those men as coaches, Dwayne Ingram and Lauren Dietrich, because, you know, they just didn't coach you. They, they, they try to, you know, they coach football and they coach basketball very well, but they also cared about you as people. And, you know, I yeah. remember we would go into Coach Dietrich's classroom. You know, I remember when I was there, school started at nine because all the kids had to come by bus half, you know, busing for an hour. So right. we'd get there at eight and we'd go in there and we'd just sit around and talk. And it wasn't always about football, it was about everything. And then same thing with Coach Ingram. He'd always talk to you about what was going on and different things. And uh, so you really believed that they cared for you about you as a person. And uh, that always stuck with me. And then we had success. You know, we won the three championships in football. My junior year, we get to the core, uh, regional finals in basketball. We win the district, we get in the regional finals. And then my senior year, we tie for the conference championship. We win the district, the regional, win the quarterfinals, and we get beat in overtime in the semis. But um, as I think back through the years, it was that experience that I appreciated so much. And uh, 
you know, I go to college. I'm fortunate enough to get a scholarship and play football. And uh, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And uh, Coach Schembechler would call you. He'd have you come in like twice a year because first he, he first got there, he wanted to get to know you and stuff. Right. And then he wanted to know what you were going to do. So I remember him asking me, well, what are you going to do when you graduate? I said, well, I'm not sure. And he goes, we ever thought about being a graduate assistant, football graduate assistant? You know, you're learning to coach. You're coaching. You're helping us. And we actually had some JV teams. And I thought, no, I hadn't thought about that. But when I got done, I immediately applied to grad school and started doing that. And I was hooked because uh, – I was a linebacker one year and then I was a tight end for two. And back then you kind of learned your position. And, uh, but now when coach Schemaker came, they really wanted you to understand the bigger picture and what, what you were doing and why you were doing and what everybody else did. And then when I started coaching, they wanted me to help on defense. Jim Young was the defensive coordinator. And uh, okay. when I started coaching on defense, I was so impressed with the, uh, in intricacy because there was a lot more to it than you thought about as a player and uh right but and again he you know I was around great people coach Schembecker you know yeah he was a gruff kind of at times hard-nosed guy right. <laughs> he cared about his players no. and you knew that you know mm -hmm. and um and then the the other coaches on the defense we had um of course, Jim Young was a coordinator, Dick Hunter, Frank Maloney, uh, George Manns. They were all, they all tried to help you. And um, so I ended up doing that um, three falls. And really after the second fall, I thought, oh, I got one more. And if, uh, if nothing, because Coach Young had had some head coach interviews. And I thought, right. nothing happens. I'm going to go work in high school, you know, because I really, right. I just like coaching. Well, right. following the 72 season, Coach Young got offered the head coaching job at the University of Arizona and offered me a assistant position with him. So okay. I was immediately went. And um, <laughs> he, because he was very similar to, you know, Lauren Dietrich and Coach Ingram and the fact that, you know, he cared about his players. And mm -hmm. what impressed me about him was uh, he wasn't Coach Shem Beckler. He had a totally different personality, but mm -hmm. he did a great job of motivating people and did it in different ways. And so I found that interesting. And, um, you know, then you go there, coach, you get exposed to some other assistant coaches you're around. And um, we went from Arizona back to Purdue and had success everywhere we'd been. And uh, he decided at that point that he was going to retire and go into administration because he wanted to try that, and he felt like they were going to elevate the then defensive coordinator, Liam Burnett, and the rest of us would have jobs. And Coach Burnett wanted to bring in a new, wanted to bring in a guy as a coordinator, and I wanted that challenge. So uh, Jack Harbaugh at Western Michigan offered me a job, so I went up with him. And again, he's a great guy, you know, and end up winning a national championship at the FCS level. And um, so I got to work with him, and then. Then I got a call from Bill McCartney at Colorado, who had been the DC at Michigan after we left, and he offered me a position job there. And my friends are saying, "You're a coordinator. What do you want to go out there for?" I said, "Because, you know, Coach, I have heard about Coach McCartney, and he is something special. And, you know, mm -hmm. we got a chance to turn that program around." And uh, went out there, and and he's he's a unique person too, but he cared about his players, and he. Yes. fight for him and um, try to teach him about not just football, but about being a good person and life and things. And um, so I have got to be with him for 10 years. And, uh, you know, then things happen. You end up moving. I went to Kansas with Glenn Mason. Then I worked to Texas A&M with R.C. Slocum. And he's a Hall of Fame coach and a great person. Mm -hmm. And then uh, – Went back there, Colorado, with Gary Barnett, who who I'd been an assistant with, and had gone to Northwestern and transformed the program, and um, and he's a great person. And uh, so you you know you kind of learn something from all of them as you go. And then uh, I went to Wisconsin for two years, and then but I had a chance to come down here, and 
you know, Pat Fitzgerald is a Hall of Fame court coach in my book, but he's the same way. He was played under Coach Barnett. And, um, you know, we feel like if we can teach young men uh, how to be successful, not just on the football field, but in the classroom and in life, that mm -hmm. they're going to end up being better football players. And, yes. you know, you feel like the impact that you can have on them, A, will help them develop as men, but and B, it'll help us win football games. And it, and it really has, you know, but um, I can't say enough about Coach Dietrich and Coach Ingram, the impact that they had on me. And, um, and when Coach Ingram got inducted into the Mason County Sports Hall of Fame, I was fortunate enough to be able to give the intro to him, and I was honored that I was asked. Unfortunately, oh, I couldn't get to Coach Dietrich's because we were in a football camp mode, and I felt bad about that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I've rambled so, a little here, but uh, no, that's all right. It's all wonderful information, and I did I did read the article they recently had, and I was just. I love defense. I, football is my thing. <laughs> and I have always loved defense. And I know that a lot of women are coaching <laughs> in football. That's always been my dream, kind of, is to coach or be a defensive coordinator oh. at the very least. Um, but knowing all of that, I think you're right. When you have certain coaches impact your life, and that care about you as a person that really carries you through to adulthood. And it does affect how you treat other people as you grow older. So you've had a lot of success. You're at 399 though. I was really hoping you'd get that 400th win on Saturday. <laughs> you know that I would be honored to get 400, but um I'm sorry, but you know, you know, to get close to retirement, you get a little emotional. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've I, been honored well, by so many former players reaching out to me mm -hmm. and some of the messages they've given me. And uh, that's worth more than a thousand wins, you know. That's true. <laughs> that's true because <laughs> now you got me going. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been a coach too. And I think that's one of the most rewarding things is the impact and positive influence you can have not only on them in their sport, but also on them as people and watching them grow and see them succeed in life as well. And when they reach out to you years later and say, oh, coach, I remember this or I remember that, it's just, it's such a, a heartwarming and wonderful thing. And you're right. A lot of that sometimes is just way more than the win-loss record, obviously, you know. Um, I would so agree. Then, I, <laughs> so, other, so then you talked about the coaches that really affected you. And I, I know Mr. Ingram, uh, he was on his way out of the high school when I was on my way in. And, but I do remember him. I remember him as a coach. And then, so what other things have you taken away from you've named a lot of wonderful coaches you've worked with and for what are some of your favorite things because you've been coaching for about 50 a little over 50 years so what are some of your favorite moments from your coaching experience well there's so many um <laughs> name a couple <laughs> yeah let me think here um well, the thing that's so rewarding about football and team sports is to win, it takes a lot of people working together. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, you, you, there's got to be a kind of a love for each other. You got to care about each other and be willing to sac make some sacrifices. And not everybody's a starter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not everybody plays as much as they'd like, but they all have an opportunity to help you win and achieve and, and be a champion. And I wasn't a star player at Michigan by any stretch of the imagination. I played and I thought, but I like the feeling I contributed to our championship and the few reunions I've been able to go back to, you know, a lot of those guys come back to it. And a lot of them are right. 
guys that didn't even get to play as much as me, but they knew that they were part of it. And I think mm -hmm. that's the thing about team sports that, that appeals to me. And, um, but, and then you alluded to the fact that to see young men grow and develop as, as they come through the college program. And some of my favorite mm -hmm. athletes are the ones that maybe didn't have immediate success. They, they might not even have started until their fourth year. Or, and I've had guys that didn't start till their fifth year, but they mm -hmm. played outstanding football and might have been like our defensive player of the year. And those are the guys you have the greatest respect for because they just stuck at it. They kept at it and stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, and they get the emails from players that are successful now or, you know, thank you for, you know, some even say, you know, I didn't realize at the time what you're trying to get, get us to understand or to do, but I sure appreciate it now. You know, those are the kind of yeah. things that make it, you know, so rewarding. Right. Because you know, and most recently with Northwestern, there was quite a few on the article that I read, there was quite a few comments from former from your players, your current players, and how much you've impacted their life just recently. And, you know, like, sometimes you remember one of those big wins that you had, or one of those you're waiting for that player to develop. Like you said, some of them didn't even start till their fourth or fifth year, but man, once they, they started, they really did a great job. Some of those things I think are accolades that contribute to you as a coach, especially, but like your players and just how highly they talked of you. I just was amazed. Of course, you know, being in the, in a lot of the different systems that you were in, but you were with a lot of the same people, right? I mean, you were- A lot of times, yes. Yeah. So now you're retired and- now I got one more game. We'll play Auburn uh, the first, but after that- Oh, okay. And that is, is that your bowl game then? Yes. Okay. The citrus, and bowl, so. citrus Bowl. So is that in Florida, right? You're right, Orlando. Okay. Well, at least you'll be warm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anything else for your future? Do you think you'll ever go back to it at this point and help at a lower level? Or do you think, ah, got to be done? You know? Oh, I, you know, I, I always love helping coaches and stuff, but no, I'm not going to coach anymore. I'm 51 <laughs> years and, uh, you know, my wife been asking me for three or four years now when I'm going to stop so I can <laughs> go to retirement. But uh, I, um, there's things I'd like to do. I love history and I like Mason County history and I'll try to do mm -hmm. stuff out at the museum. I've done help at Manistee or, you know, different things when I was able to in the summers. And uh, you right. know, so there's things like that I would like to do. And uh, in coaching, you're, busy a lot of the year and when you do get time mm -hmm. to kind of de decompress so you know i would like to be able to see you see a lot of old friends that i have kept in touch with but haven't been able to see a lot and then we have a place on hamlin lake so we're gonna hopefully in the summers i'll be able to see some old classmates and old friends that you know that i've we keep in touch but i haven't been able to see as regularly as i'd like so I look forward to that. And, um, you know, when we do travel, try to travel and see friends and mm -hmm. get around and, uh, and do some traveling, you know, to, that we haven't been able to do and right. throughout the years. Right. Because you have just the one son, right, Jake? Right. Yep. And so it'll be nice for you to be able to, like you said, decompress because once you're at the college level, it is almost a year round job. I mean, you're preparing always. I mean, you don't get a lot of downtime because you're always with the game and the way it has evolved over, you know, even the last 50 years since you've been coaching, there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of different rules. There's a lot of different stuff that goes into it. And, you know, taking all of that into account, you have to adjust your, your coaching style sometimes, you know, uh, so that's probably stuff you won't miss is watching all that tape, will you? <laughs> no, but that's the fun part. The recruiting was the harder part. But, um, mm -hmm. well, 
working for Coach Fitzgerald was great because he believes in family and he tried to give us time off. You know, we'd have 10 right. days off in the spring and then, you know, in the summer, he made sure we had blocks of time off to get away and recharge. Um, and that's, that's the good news, bad news about going to a bowl. You're working all the way through the holidays. You go play in a bowl and you come home and you start recruiting. And, uh, and then right. we would start spring practice toward the end of February. And then, you know, we'd go three weeks and then we'd have our spring exam week, spring break week. So we'd get 10 days off there. And then we'd come back and finish spring ball, go into spring recruiting. And then you get into summer camps. And then he made sure we had well, almost four weeks off. I mean, not all been in a row, but enough to where you could get away and recharge. So, you know, right. he, he believed in family and he preached it and that was greatly appreciated. Right. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add or anything else you'd like us to take away? You've had a, an absolute stellar career. So that I think is an absolute wonderful accolade. And I just, is there anything else you'd want us to know? Well, I'm a proud Mason County native, a proud Scottville <laughs> native. And, uh, you know, I have such great memories of growing up in Scottville. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, some of us, you know, Scottville natives, have, we were, we've talked about it. Um, you know, I was back in the days when a, they used to said it'd take us a village to raise a child, you know. Mm -hmm. you go, <laughs> There were a lot of parents in that town watching over you, you know, and uh, yep. you didn't get away with a whole lot, which wasn't bad, you know, um, right. and, but I just have such great recollections of all the people in Scottville, you know, that, uh, you know, and the thing, you know, the optimists and the things they did and like the mm -hmm. seventh, eighth grade football, you know, I think that might've been the optimist that did that, you know, and then a the little mm -hmm. league baseball and um, the things they try to do for, um, for the for kids you know back then and uh of course did you yeah. ever did, you, did they ever have the scottville harvest festival when you were there oh yes oh yes uh, <laughs> it was big time when i was growing up i'll tell you, you know? <laughs> so those sure. kind of, you know and uh, it's like when we uh came back from lansing after losing in the semifinals oh. in overtime where, you know we get to Custer and there's like a, car a caravan of cars <laughs> in the town. We go up to the Scottle Town Hall and we get a big reception, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you remember, you know. Um, yeah. And I've been fortunate to have been uh, played on uh, well, the three high school championships teams. As a senior, we won the Big Ten and then coaching, I've been in 12 championships. So, you know, that... I take a lot of pride in, but I think I take more pride in the young man that we, you know, tried to impact. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I've loved every minute of it. There's that old saying, uh, if you do something you'll love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I can say that's yeah. how I felt. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and doing this Zoom call with us. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Because now you got to get back to work and kind of get prepared for your bowl game and good luck to you well, thank and you. all your future endeavors and i might be seeing you i am still in the mason county area so <laughs> well thank you for having me i was honored all right all right thank you so much okay take and care bye. take care bye-bye and for more news go to masoncountypress.com